This young astronaut has crash-landed on an unknown planet, however. He is about to learn that it is not too different from how Earth used to be at one point in time. The year is 2157, and Earth has become the heaven that humans always aspired to turn it into. War, famine, and diseases are a thing of the past. Nature has revived and is thriving. Now, humanity has turned its sights toward the rest of the universe. Young students with exceptional strength, courage, and a strong belief in goodness are tasked with exploring unknown planets and looking for extraterrestrial life. A young man named Maxim is on such a voyage when his spacecraft is damaged by an asteroid and he is forced to make an emergency landing on an unknown planet. As he lands on the planet and steps out of his spacecraft, the vessel explodes, leaving him with no way to communicate with Earth and no way to return home. He decides to start exploring the planet. The planet seems to resemble Earth in many ways, so he hopes to find life here that may help him. However, he encounters an indigenous being of the planet who appears to be hostile. To understand this planet's language, Maxim inserts a translation device into his ear. The indigenous man, named Zeph, hands Maxim over to the authorities of the planet, who interrogate him by placing a helmet on him which projects his thoughts onto a screen. Meanwhile, a corporal named Guy Gall is assigned the mission of transferring Maxim to the capital city. Next, Maxim senses a strange signal or radiation in the air while all the soldiers around start enthusiastically chanting an anthem. On the way to the capital, Max notices a strange tower, and Guy explains that it serves as a protective measure against enemies. Just then, the base of the tower is destroyed in an explosion, and it stumbles onto the road. Guy gets trapped under the rubble, but Maxime pulls him out in time to save his life. It is revealed that this attack has been carried out by the rebels, the number one enemies of the state. Guy and Maxime continue their journey on foot and finally reach the capital. In the meantime, the head of the Department of Special Research named Stranick calls his subordinate Fank and tells him to bring Maxim over to him. Stranick is a powerful figure in the government, so what he asks has to be delivered. While Fank delivers Maxim to Stranick, another powerful figure in the government, the prosecutor, asks his assistant to gather all the information he can about this situation. Next, the towers in the city, just like the one that Maxim saw earlier, activate and the prosecutor prepares for it by climbing in his tub and clamping a special stick in his mouth. Fank, who is driving Maxim at the time, has a seizure, and amidst the chaos, Maxim escapes. He observes life in the alien city. Meanwhile, a meeting is called of a group called the Unknown Fathers. Stranick is among them. Next, Maxim enters a local cafe and defends a waitress against a rude and insulting customer. The girl is grateful to him. Her name is Rada Gall, and she is revealed to be Guy's sister. As Maxim walks Rada home, he gets into an altercation with a street gang, but he makes short work of them. Rada is impressed and invites him into her home where Guy arrives. Maxim begins investigating the workings of this world and quickly deduces that Rada and Guy, like everyone else in this city, are in the grip of strong propaganda and false information disseminated by the government. For example, Rada strongly believes that this planet is hollow and there is no such thing as space. She believes that they are living on the inner surface of a sphere, and the light in the sky comes from within the planet. She doesn't even know that there is a universe full of stars out there. Next, Guy explains to Maxim how the Unknown Fathers are the saviors of this country, named Saraksh. They built the defense towers which have prevented wars and saved this state from its enemies. No one knows the identities of the Unknown Fathers because they aren't considered rulers, but rather public servants. Next, Guy recommends Maxim for a position in the army, and Maxim shows great skill during training, which impresses and surprises Guy. Guy and Maxim spend a lot of time discussing politics, and Guy reveals to Maxim that neighboring countries despise Saraksh, because there was a time when all the countries were a single state united by one history. Meanwhile, Maxim and Rada also spend a lot of time together and grow romantic feelings for one another. Maxim is tasked with capturing rebels for the government who are identified by their frequent seizures. One of the rebels is about to shoot the captain of the force, and Maxim saves him. Next, Maxim observes the interrogations of the rebels, and he realizes that they aren't terrorists or degenerates as the government has labeled them. 
but rather regular people with their own beliefs and ideals. The interrogations are cruel, and Maxim cannot handle it. He does not agree that these rebels simply hate the government because someone is paying them for it. Fank informs Stranick that he has found Maxim, and in the meanwhile the captain of the force orders Maxim to execute the rebels. Maxim disobeys the order and lets the rebels go free. He tries to tell the captain about the true justice that exists on Earth, but the captain doesn't care. He shoots Maxim and leaves him to die. The Unknown Fathers hold a meeting where the prosecutor advocates for starting a war against a neighboring state. The Chief Father says they need a pretext for the war, for example, an attack on one of the towers. The rebels find Maxim alive and well, and a doctor among them is shocked and says that Maxim shouldn't be alive. Maxim discusses with the rebels that the Unknown Fathers aren't saviors, just conspirators that crave power and put down anyone who opposes them. He reveals he has figured out that the towers are emitters of a special radiation which hypnotizes the common people and makes them more susceptible to propaganda. A small minority of people aren't hypnotized but suffer terrible seizures instead, and they are labeled as rebels and degenerates and eliminated because they won't succumb to the mind control. The rebels recognize Maxim as one of their own and decide to take him along on a mission to sabotage one of the towers. However, unbeknownst to them, this mission has secretly been organized by the prosecutor to be a pretext for the war. The mission succeeds, but Maxim is the only one who survives it. Afterward, he rushes to Rada's home and tells Guy and Rada everything he has deduced. Guy does not believe him and simply tells him to return to wherever he came from. Just then, the military arrives and arrests Maxim, Rada, and Guy. In prison, Maxim meets Zeph, the man who arrested him earlier. He is also a rebel. Stranick meets the prosecutor and demands that he hand over Maxim. In return, the prosecutor asks that Stranick pause the building of more powerful radiation towers because the towers make him have a seizure too, and he doesn't want the general public to know this. Maxim, along with other prisoners, is sent to fight and disable war robots left over from old wars all along the southern border of the country. Meanwhile, the prosecutor finds out that the radiation does not affect Maxim at all. He backs out of his agreement with Stranick and asks that Maxim be brought to him. Maxim suggests to Zeph and the other rebels that instead of trying to take out the towers one by one, they need to attack the central tower, where the main signal originates. Zeph says that there are mutants in the south who are impervious to the radiation like Maxim, and they may be able to help him. Maxim disables a self-driving tank and uses it to head south. At the border, Maxim is stopped by the army, and Guy is among them. Maxim kidnaps him and drives the tank through the barricade. He tells Guy all about the towers again, and Guy does not believe him until they are out of the range of the towers, and Guy realizes what it's like to not feel the radiation. Guy gets angry when he realizes that he has been a puppet of the government for so long, but Maxim reminds him that there are people still stuck in the hypnosis, and he has begun this rebellion to save them. Guy and Maxim encounter the mutants, and they behave very nicely with the duo. The two arrive in the city of the mutants and note the pitiable conditions. The radiation from the bombings of past wars has turned these people, and this place, into rejects. Maxim speaks to the leaders of the mutants and suggests an uprising against the Unknown Fathers. They refuse because they simply aren't physically strong enough for something like that. They suggest that Maxim seek help from the Island Empire. To reach them, the mutants offer Maxim an old bomber plane. During the plane ride, the two are exposed to radiation from a tower, and Guy suddenly becomes fanatically devoted to Maxim. He reaches to hug Maxim, and Maxim loses control of the plane. The plane crashes into the tower, disabling it and breaking Guy out of his trance. Automatic anti-aircraft guns left over from previous wars shoot down the plane into the water, but Maxim and Guy manage to swim ashore. Next, they notice a giant old sea vessel, and Maxim decides to investigate it. Meanwhile, the prosecutor captures Rada in an attempt to use her to find Maxim, but she refuses to help, and he throws her in prison. On the sea vessel, Guy and Maxim discover that the island empire was just as fascist and brutal as Sarek's. 
and it executed Guy's fellow countrymen by the thousands. Hence, seeking their help is not an option. Max and Guy swim back to shore and are captured by the Border Patrol. As the prosecutor intended, war has broken out with another country, and now the two prisoners will be sent to the front lines. In order to get to Maxim, Stranic engineers Radas escape from prison. He talks to Fank about how this war is interrupting his plans and orders him to bring Maxim at any cost. He admits that he fears Maxim. As Maxim and Guy are being sent to the front lines, Fank arrives to collect Maxim, but the captain of the force refuses to hand him over. As the men are climbing into tanks, Fank finally manages to catch up to Maxim, but Maxim refuses to abandon his friends. He knocks Fank out and takes him into a tank alongside Guy. As the war begins, Maxim steers his tank in the opposite direction and Guy blindly follows his orders, influenced by the radiation. As the captain tries to execute Maxim for deserting the force, Guy offers his body as a human shield to protect Maxim. Maxim kills the captain, but it is too late. Guy has succumbed to his injuries. Fank regains consciousness and tells Maxim about Rada, which convinces Maxim to cooperate with Stranic. After the battle ends, Fank tells Maxim Stranic's proposal. He will have a place to live, a car, and complete freedom, but he will only get to see Rada after he proves his loyalty to the state. As Maxim works in Stranic's department, the prosecutor secretly meets up with him and suggests that he overthrow the Unknown Fathers. He says that Maxim can do this by reaching the Central Tower, the coordinates to which Hell provide. He suggests that Maxim use the Central Tower to emit a radiation which will cause depression in the masses, including the army. Once the army is subdued, he can take out the Unknown Fathers and rule the state himself, with the prosecutor serving as his advisor. Maxim takes Zeph and a couple of other rebels and embarks on the mission. He gains access to the central tower after defeating a couple of guards in his way and activates the depression radiation, subduing the entire population. Stranic, who appears immune to the radiation like Maxim, rushes to catch him. Maxim changes the prosecutor's plan and instead plants a bomb at the central tower. As he leaves the building, Stranic chases him, and behind them, a massive explosion destroys the central tower, breaking the people free from the mind control for the first time in decades. Maxim arrives at the place where Rada is being kept in a cryogenic chamber, but as he is about to leave with her, his path is blocked by Stranic. Stranic reveals that he is actually a member of the galactic security from Earth, who came to this planet two decades ago to assist it. He berates Maxim and his foolishness, which has caused chaos to erupt on the streets, destroying everything that he had built over 20 years. He says that Maxim did not take into account famine, inflation, and war which is now going to erupt, because Sarax was already taking up arms against neighboring states. He beats Maxim up, Maxim fights back, and accuses Stranic of building the towers and enslaving these people. Stranic reminds Maxim that all civilizations that reach peace and prosperity have to first go through wars and slavery, and this one is no exception. Maxim punches Stranic into a truck and says that this is his home now. He will fight inflation, poverty, famine, and all evils for them, but he will not allow any more towers to be built. He will not allow slavery as long as he lives. Rada comes out and hugs her lover. Stranic smiles ever so slightly as he sees this spectacle. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.